Welcome to an enlightened hour of interactive talk. This is Guided Spirit Conversations with host Marla Goldberg. In this program, we spotlight guests from all over the globe who have helped others change their lives and will provide you with the tips, tools, and techniques that you need to help you make a difference in your own life. Now, here is Marla Goldberg. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? Welcome to Guided Spirit Conversations. It's Thursday, so you know it's Guided Spirit Conversations Day. It's also Yom Kippur. So anyone out there who's observing Yom Kippur, I hope you're having an easy fast. If you're fasting, I hope that your name is inscribed and you can start fresh this year with all your sins behind you. And I put, I'm going to put sins in air quotes because are they really sins or are they learning experiences? Something to think about, right? But today we've got a show that's called Divinely Designing Your Life with Cassandra Bodzak. And Cassandra is a thought leader, best-selling author, and sought-after on-camera personality and speaker in the, in the mindfulness and personal development world. She is also the host of the popular spiritual podcast, Divine Downloads. And you may have seen Cassandra on ABC's The Taste with Anthony Bourdain as the happy, healthy living guru or in her work with Shape, Eating Well, Huffington Post, Teen Vogue, Thrive, Fabletics, Lululemon, Soul Cycle, and many more. She has also been called an award-winning thought leader and intuitive coach in Forbes and a spiritual leader by Well and Good. Cassandra helps people all over the world learn the process for bringing their soul's desires into their everyday reality through her online group program, Divinely Design Your Life as well as through all her free content, which she shares on YouTube and on all her social media. Welcome, Cassandra. Thanks for having me. (laughs) I'm so happy we're able to do this. So, you know, we were talking off off air about that you started your professional career as an actress, an online personality, and you sort of moved into personal development and then your spiritual journey. What was the catalyst that that brought you to your journey? You know, I think um, there's been like a few over the years, but the biggest one was when I was 25 and uh, my little brother got diagnosed with this um, rare autoimmune disease. Mm. And it just totally brought me to my knees up until that point. um, I feel like I hadn't had anything like that touch so close to home with someone Um, My little brother is three years younger than me. And so he was 22 at the time. So, so young and so seemingly healthy and then gets this really scary um, diagnosis. And that really threw me into this kind of pit of despair um, through which I ended up finding God and finding meditation and um, through that sadness that I just didn't know how to hold myself, I started talking to God and, um, just kind of as a reflex, it wasn't like I had been, I had a relationship with God, I guess my whole life, but I hadn't been like talking to, you know, God every day or meditating or, or anything like that. Um, but in those, that moment, it was the only thing I could think to do and just begging for some help on how am I supposed to like go on living and like pretending like life is okay, you know, knowing that this was going on with my brother. And, um, and I, I kept on getting meditate. (laughs) Whenever I would go into these like moments of just like, you know, crying and talking. And so I started looking up meditations at first, it was just looking at meditations on YouTube. I was like, I, I, that's how I was like, I have no idea. Like, where do I begin? Right. Right. Exactly. I did a ton of different things on YouTube. I was in New York at the time. So I went to like a Buddhist monastery I found in Brooklyn. I went to Kundalini meditation classes. I got like, went to a Vedic class. Like I started reading a, like A Course in Miracles, joined in A Course in Miracles. Like I just like threw myself into it. Um, and that was really the, that was like the, he like popped my lid, so to speak, I guess. And then I could never look back. <laughs> you can't you know it's a, I heard this expression said once it's once I stepped out the one-way door down my spiritual path because once you go down it you never want to turn around and give it up why oh, would you I, it's amazing 
I remember distinctly having that moment, like walking around Manhattan while I was at, you know, in, in the middle of that journey or at the beginning of that journey. And I remember just walking around and having that really clear realization that things would never be the same. And I could never look at the world the same. And I could never go back to the, I don't know, it, I'm going to say ignorance. I don't know if ignorance is the word, but I can never go back to the not knowing, right? I can never go back to like the me I was before that happened right. because I can never not know what I now knew. It makes such a huge difference. And you can't, you can never go back. And then I say again, I repeat myself by saying, but why would you want to? Because exactly. once you start getting all the miracles that happen as you step down the path and all these aha moments and these epiphanies, it, you know, a lot of your questions get answered. It's sort of like, why would you want to give that up and go back to the life where you weren't awake? You were still asleep. Agree. Yeah, agree. And so, okay, so you um, have this business divinely design your life. What's that about? How did you come about bringing that business to fruition? And what's it about? Yeah. So after, you know, once I started on that journey, um, I started noticing that my, I did it, you know, I started it from that place of not really even thinking about like divinely designing my life or manifesting anything. It was more of just survival. Like, I just don't want to be sad every day. I want to know how do I like emotionally handle this really hard thing going on. So that's like where I started it from. But what I noticed was an interesting side effect was that my life was transforming as I was doing this work. And I was doing it from that intention of, I just want to have like more happiness. I just want to feel more peace. But then slowly I started learning about manifesting and your intentions and also just following what lights you up. I started kind of going mm -hmm. through, you know, starting doing the, I guess you'd call it shadow work of kind of looking at, you know, what are beliefs that I had that weren't serving me and all this, you know, I was just doing all this work kind of organically. And a couple of years later, I ended up being on ABC's The Taste. And that happened kind of, it was like, I felt like this energy was just holding me and moving me through this period when I was doing all this work. And I had just been putting videos on YouTube. I had the blog, I had a blog, you know, again, that was just like not a business just for like my own personal creative expression. And that was part of what the more I meditated, the more I got into the spiritual teachings, I realized how important it was for me to like follow those kind of soul callings or just you know, from a place of joy and feeling connected. Right. And, and so then producers found me from ABC from the stuff that like, I didn't even think was any good. I was just putting it out there to like do it. You know, it was very therapeutic for me really. And I remember after being, you know, they flew me out to universal studios and I'm, you know, up in this really nice hotel room, we're filming for, you know, a couple months. And I felt like, I felt like God, the universe source, like picked me up and placed me here. Right. And I had never felt that way so much in my life. I was like, oh, this is like that quote, like God circled this on a map for you. Right. right. And, and I remember in that moment. And then shortly after that, I was like, well, on my way, you know, I wrote my first book, eat with intention. I was teaching, I was coaching. Um, I was speaking more about loving your body and, and, you know, um, and cooking and, and how food and meditation coexists and all that, my first part of my journey. And I had this moment where I was like, how I need to teach other people how to get here. Right. Mm -hmm. And I saw how, you know, so many people, my, my life in so many ways kind of felt like it transformed overnight. It was, you know, a longer process than that, but it felt like that because it wasn't like I was plotting or planning or trying to like, you know, had some master plan, you right. know. And so that's when I first started realizing, wow, you know, more and more of the people that followed me and were coaching with me also wanted to know, you know, how do I do this? Like, how do I design this? Like you design this life. You know, I also ended up moving up to Cal out to California, like all these different things. And so I was like, I want to teach people how to access, you know, what I really call practical magic. 
um, which is the meeting of like that energetic alignment and the that work um, with the guided actions that they receive, right? And doing them both and getting them to actively, you know, design their lives. And so over the years, my work has transformed into helping women all over the world really get clear with what is it, what life is it that their soul really desires, and then removing any of the blocks within them that stop them from going after it, from feeling that they're worthy or deserving, or they can have it, and then taking those, you know, embodying that future, them manifesting that life, and taking those aligned actions every day. And so I created um, Divinely Design Your Life because I was I can only work with so many people one-on-one and I was like, I had been working with people one-on-one for so long. I was like, let me break this down into a formula and really show them step by step. And every, you know, with divinely design your life, it's like, there's like a teaching module and then you have a meditation and like a journey that you go on with that and journaling and stuff. So it was very similar to the process I was leading my one-on-one client through. And then we get to have gatherings twice a month. So we get that community, which I, I really didn't have when I was doing this, um, you know, that I longed for so much to actually have a group of other women from all around the world that are doing the work with you um, that can share that journey. So yeah, so it's been really, really, really beautiful to be able to see other women step into that and take charge of their life and say, oh, guess what? I actually am a divine creator here. I get to, you know, my desires are divine. They're here for a reason. And if I desire to have a certain experience in this lifetime, then I can manifest that. I can create that. And that even is, you know, what I'm doing, like my my latest book, Manifesting Through Meditation, that's that's coming out, is a, a similar process where it's showing how, you know, in Divinely Design Your Life, I do it too, where it's like every step is a meditation, right? And how much I really feel like meditation is this catalyst for divinely designing our lives, for creating it. And we can, through different meditations, go through those different steps of the process to help us um, call in that life and create that life. You know, I think it's it's manifesting and co-creation. It is. So you had, so I want to go back to when you were doing your health and your, you know, body, because so many people, men and women, believe it or not, have this, this body image issue. And you wrote this book, Eating with Intention. So yep. let's talk about what's in the book and the intent, you know, what, what eating with intention does in regards to helping people to A, you know, not be so self-critical of themselves by looking in the mirror, but how eating with intention helps them shift their life's experience. Yeah. So eating, uh, eating with intention walks you through that process of rekindling the relationship with your body and rekindling that communication first and foremost. And so I believe the first step to that is just starting to commune with your body. Um, and thinking of our body as a long-term relationship, right? It's a long, it's our longest term relationship. (laughs) It truly (laughs) is. Our body and our mind. (laughs) Right. But we don't think of it that way, right? We don't think of it, you know, and sometimes, you know, uh, if, you know, the process of eat with intention is, is similar to the kind of that of a relationship, right? Where it's like, first, we need to learn communication, right? We need to get communication off the ground. And so many of us, because of our frustrations with our body, or just because it was something we were never taught growing up, um, we don't have a relationship with our body. We kind of just, it's like we take it for granted. Yeah. Yeah. We take it for granted and then something goes wrong and we have to deal with it, you know, like a car, right? That we're just going to like have to fix something, (laughs) where it's really an ongoing relationship. So Eat With Intention talks you through starting that communication again through, I call it body wisdom meditation. So it's meditating and connecting to your body and just starting that dialogue. And we have a couple processes in there about apologizing to your body. Mm -hmm. So 
apologizing for maybe all of the things that you've said that weren't so nice. Perhaps there have been ways that you've heard it through over exercising or from eating too many, you know, foods that it didn't like. Drinking too addicted. much alcohol. Exactly. Right. <laughs> we have to apologize. We have to apologize. Cause just like, again, like any right. relationship before you can, you got to kind of make your amends right before you can rekindle that relationship. So we start off that and I walk you through that process. Um, and then from there, we start asking our body, what, what do you need that I'm not giving you? Right. Right. And what foods do you like? What, how do you like to move? We become, I call it becoming detectives, right? We become de oh. detectives and we investigate what our body wants to tell us. And then we also, in eat with intention, there's a process, um, called food detectiving. And that's kind of when we, we start logging our food, but not from a place of like counting calories or anything like that. Um, it's really from a place of like, what did we eat? How did our body feel after we ate it? Right. What was, the, what was the energy that we felt? Like, did we grab that? Were we in a rush to go to work? So we like grabbed a bagel and a latte at Starbucks and then rushed in. And okay, so log that down. Wasn't a rush. This is what I ate. And then an hour later, just noticing I was feeling exhausted again at work or I felt fine, whatever it is, however you feel, right? Some of us are going to feel fine. Some of us are going to be like, wow, I totally need something else to eat. That wasn't enough or it didn't mm -hmm. like you know, for right. me, but how does, so I, and I'm, um, because I had this experience last night with my husband, I honestly think the, if you're going out to eat, or even if you're staying home to eat, the experience of dining that you encounter makes a huge difference. And so when a restaurant brings you, um, alcohol, food, like food that was pre-made that shouldn't have been pre-made. It should have been right out of the oven, but yet why is it cold on the inside? And then you have situation after situation like that. And you, it, you, your, your whole dining experience gets um, disappointing. I'll just use that word, but you can have that at home. How does that affect with eating with intention? Absolutely. So we def we talk about that in the book as well. And I call it, you know, there's something that as someone that has, you know, been a, a cook and a chef in that is that we all eat with our eyes first. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons I think a lot of people struggle with healthy eating and some healthier restaurants also are not great at this is that they don't take the effort to make healthy food look good. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's important. We eat with our eyes. So whatever you're eating it matters if the plate is pretty. It matters if it looks pretty on the plate. You know, yes. of course it matters if it's hot or whatever. To or your if it's supposed to be cold, it's cold. Yeah. It's hot, it's hot, cold, it's cold. Yeah. So, so it is, you know, if we think about, you know, if we think about our food as like an offering to the temple that is our body, mm -hmm. right? Then we, you wouldn't show up to like a temple offering with like a bouquet of dead roses. Right. I don't know. It's a weird analogy, but I think no, but it's a great analogy mean. because you wouldn't, you wouldn't say, here's my offering and everything is dead and lifeless. You want to bring life when you give an offering. Yeah. So you would want something that's beautiful and full of life. And so if we also think about eating that way, it does matter. Right. That's like, think about like now in California, they have, it's been like a whole thing. They have these beautiful acai bowls, right? With mm -hmm. all of the fruits and the granola and these wild bright colors. And that is so much more exciting. I think more and more people are eating smoothies because it's essentially a smoothie, right? right? Because of how beautiful they're packaging it. And so I think that really matters for us because it matters for our joy and our enjoyment of the food that it looks beautiful and it tastes delicious. And, you know, a big reason of me eat with intention also has 75 different plant-based recipes and each recipe has like a mantra and a meditation with it. And they're all, you know, really healthy, really nourishing for your body recipes. But the impetus for me was that they're also really delicious and really beautiful, right? When the end result is a beautiful presentation. Yeah, because we should we should feel like we're honoring our temple when we sit down and that changes the eating experience, you know, and how we feel in the energy as we're digesting that food and it's assimilating in our body. So true. 
We're going to take a quick break, Cassandra. We'll be right back. Stay tuned with Cassandra Bodak. And feel free to call in 888-346-9141. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs> all right, great job. We're all clear. Back in about two. Thank you. I have to tell you, when you were talking about that, you know that cereal commercial? I can't remember what cereal it is, but she it's like one of those cooking shows and they have these cakes and you see these two beautiful ones and then you see this one that like is collapsed and she goes, oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> I don't know what that, that vision came into my head when you were talking about these unappealing foods yeah. and eating them. <laughs> yeah, that's too funny. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. It's so important for us to, to it just changes it. It is. I know before I eat, I always say, I'm sorry. Thank you. Please forgive. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And then I think, you know, the, the process, um, you know, of you know, who made the food, who brought the food, who cooked the food, who presented the food. Yeah. And that's also, I, that's also a big thing. Cause again, it's like making it a ritual and having that reverence for it, you know, yeah just whatever I mean whatever you say or whatever you know someone feels called to say it's just it's you know about taking that moment to be like this is like this is an important moment not just like let me like scarf this while I'm doing this while I'm doing the, you know doing seven things you know you never taste it yeah it's like you don't even taste it it's just you're just like I don't you know and then I mean, you wonder why you have indigestion exactly or heartburn or whatever it might be yeah yeah, it's a huge difference. Yeah, <laughs> it's a huge, it's a huge difference. And you also you don't notice in those moments, you don't even notice the negative reaction. Sometimes you're having to food, because you're like not you're so unconscious. Um, in that moment that you're like, Oh, I just shoved that in my face on the way to work. And then you're not even connecting the dots that like an hour later, you have a headache or something, you know, right. That's why it drives me crazy when nice restaurants have TVs on and it's sports. Oh, me too. I hate that. I like, I try to boycott restaurants with TV. I, well, sometimes it's really hard and, and, and it's sort of like, oh my God, really, do we really have to see sports or do we have to watch, you know, whatever is on there? It's just, sometimes it's nice to just have companionship with the people you're with and have focused attention. And yep. even if you're by yourself having a drink or stopping for a meal and a drink, whatever it might be, but having focused attention with that too, so you can pay attention to what it tastes like, what it feels like, because there is texture, there is smell, there is taste, and how it's assimilating as you're eating it. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, sorry to just yet. We are about to come back. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> You are listening to Guided Spirit Conversations. To reach Marla Goldberg or her guest today, you're invited to call into the program at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is guidedspiritconversations at gmail.com. Now, back to this week's program. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Welcome back. If you've just tuned in, I'm here today with Cassandra Bodzak. Now, Cassandra is amazing. She is a thought leader, best-selling author, and sought-after on-camera personality and speaker. She talks about mindfulness and personal development. She has a podcast of her own called Divine Downloads, and her book, Manifestation Meditations, is launching. When is it launching? I know it's this month. Yeah, it's actually, it's next week. It's on the 21st. Oh, I love that number. Congratulations. <laughs> so Thank let's you. see, the, for those who are watching, well, let's see the cover again. I know you put it up Thank before. So the colors are so healing. They're Yay. so peaceful. Thank so, you. So where the, where's the book going to be sold? So you can get the book anywhere, um, anywhere you buy books. And uh, right now I'm leading people to Amazon for pre-ordering. Um, cause I feel like they're the easiest for pre-ordering. You can get it available for Kindle right now on Amazon as well, but come the 21st, you should be able to get it wherever you like to get your books. And, um, and if you pre-order it, I do have some book bonuses. So you can, uh, if you go to Cassandra slash manifesting, I'm giving away, uh, 
five free guided meditations from the book, as well as um, a beautiful mini book on my manifesting process and a free workshop. So you can dive in there. Beautiful gifts. I think everyone should pre-register. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? And then it's, it's paying it forward with all those beautiful gifts that you're offering. Yes. It's lovely. So let's talk a little bit more about your journey and how your journey has given you more insight for self-love and feeling more self-worth, confidence, the things that a lot of people do to no fault of their own get imprinted with because of other people's projections, their, their expectations. Absolutely. Um, I think all of us, all of us have some level of like, an I'm not enough wound or I'm not lovable, you know, and I definitely was no exception to that. And I still obviously always doing work, always doing work. But yes. um, I think that it was so funny that one of the first meditations that, you know, once I was getting into meditations, I remember I was looking um, up like more prescriptive meditations, like for, and the first one I wanted to embark on for like 90 days was a self-love one. Um, because I knew that that was something that I really struggled with, that I had always been someone that is beats myself up and overly critical. Um, and so that was a big, you know, intention of my healing journey as well was for me, that just connects to like feeling peace right? Feeling more peace inside of our ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think meditation helps a lot with that. Um, helped a lot. I mean, there's been a lot of things that have helped me on that journey. I think it started with meditation. And what meditation helps with is, I like to say it kind of gives you a, I call it the miracle moment. <laughs> and the miracle moment is when you kind of have a thought, but then you see that you have an option. Right. So yes. it's like having that moment of being like, oh, Cass, I can't believe you did that again. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like having that moment because you meditated that morning and having that moment to be like, is that really the most loving way to talk to myself right now about this? Right. Exactly. And instead, you know, choosing again and saying, okay, maybe that wasn't the best, but we did, we tried. And next time we're going to do better or it's okay, or whatever it is, depending on what the situation was, but just allowing yourself to kind of just have that insight to choose again when you feel like you're going down. So I think meditation has been really helpful with that in really shifting the thought patterns. Um, but then I also really believe in looking at all that stuff. So through, through seeing what I really desired, what I wanted to create in my life, Right. And I, I go into this in, in the book, Manifesting Through Meditation, because it's part of the process. But through seeing what I really wanted to create in my life, the self love journey kind of fell in there because I had to look at all the blocks I had to create it, which was yes. most of my lack of self love <laughs> and self worth. Right. You're because right. so many of the things we want, whether it's a romantic relationship, whether it's, you know, more impact in our career, whether it's like, health, wellness, um, abundance, so prosperity, that, even that all the things, everything really that we desire when we ask ourselves, okay, what are the beliefs and the stories that I've told myself that I can't have it right. That's, right. you know, we have to make that inventory. And that's, I think that's part of the work, right. Is looking at that and saying, okay, where did this come from? And mm -hmm. so I do a ton of that work of the, where did it, like, what's the belief? Where did it come from? And then what's the evidence I've collected over the years, right? Cause we're, we're all evidence collectors. So we have this belief, it gets instilled in us usually because of something that happened in our childhood, mm -hmm. right? Or it could be a past life. Sometimes we carry them over. I was right? going to say, yeah. <laughs> Right. So it's either a past life or it was early this life. And, you know, maybe it was your parents. Maybe it was the media. Maybe it was someone at school. Or teacher. Like, I mean, you, or, or even one of your relatives, because people don't yeah. think before they talk and they just blurt things out, not realizing the imprint it's going to make on the individual. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Once you start unlocking that, it's kind of, t- <laughs> <laughs> kind of terrifying. You're like, oh my God, I hope I don't say, I can't say anything. No. Well, it makes but- you more mindful when you talk to somebody else saying, I don't want to be responsible for imprinting them with a negative belief system. Absolutely. Yeah. It definitely makes you way more careful. And especially when you talk to children about yes. really thinking about how is that being interpreted by that little child brain? right? Because that's so much where the mix up goes, right? So I looked at a lot of my childhood wounds, and how um, they were affecting my life. And they I, I had all these beliefs that were totally sabotaging me, sabotaging me in, you know, creating the life that I wanted, but also sabotaging me and just loving myself right? Because they, they go right together. And so through that, I did, um, I did um, EMDR work. I've done tapping. Mm-hmm. I've done a lot of energy healing modalities. Yep. Um, I've gone into my Akashic records to heal past lives. Um, I really throw the gamut at it. And because I believe, and I talk about this in Divinely Design Your Life, we do all of that work in there too, because I th- it's part of the process. And then I also have like 10 different meditations in the book, Manifesting Through Meditations, on all these things like clearing wounds and, and going to the records and, and heal, like clearing anxiety and clearing these um, thoughts that we have, because I really believe like this is the work of our lifetime it- is... To- I'm sorry. I just, I need to ask you a question about the meditations because people are, have busy schedules and they're trying to squeeze it in. What are the time windows of the meditations? Are they short, succinct ones? Do you have various times for different ones? There's, there is various ones. And it's actually funny because, um, I think my editor at my publisher there, there, they were not as like you know, immersed in meditation as I have been. So they were asking me because for most of the met, there's 10, like five, like quick, I call them quickie little hit meditations mm-hmm. in the beginning. And then the rest of them, I really say, you know, it can, you could go as long as like 45 minutes and you can make it as short as like five to 10 if you want to. So it's kind of up to you how much time you kind of want to linger in certain parts of the meditation. And I did that intentionally So that the person that, you know, only has the five minutes can still, can still tap on that door. Right. Right. And I think, you know, it's going to be different for everyone. And I'm sure, you know, this too, it's like, even for, you know, people like us who have been meditating for a while, some Mm -hmm. days, like you knock on the door and you're like, you fall into like the infinite abyss. And other times you knock on the door and you're waiting there. (laughs) (laughs) Right, and so you know for those of you that are you know coming at it from the like I only have five minutes here and again well one I maybe would save some of the deeper ones for when you have a little bit more time and you can kind of really be in that space of like you know a sacred ritual with it and then for a lot of the other ones just know that every time you show for me, meditation is a conversation with our infinite self, right? Um, when we connect to source. And so every time we show up for that conversation, whether it's five minutes or an hour, right, is right. strengthening that connection. And so sometimes you're going to show up for a five minute meditation. And I think you'll always feel better, but you're going to have varying experiences based on how much time you can sit and, and where it's state of mind you're sitting in. And also consistency. Yes, everything. Makes, yeah, that's huge. It's absolutely huge. So now are your publisher and editor meditation? Maybe. Yes. Now they're, now they're obsessed <laughs> with it. They're like, as I was like turning in things, they're like, oh my God, this is so good. I'm like doing, they're like, email me and tell me which meditation <laughs> they're doing. <laughs> And it's so. amazing. So you said you did the self one for 90 days. Do you suggest when you find a guided meditation that you do it for an extended period of time over and over and over again to get the biggest bang for your buck, so to speak? I think there's a couple of different ways of approaching it. So I do like sitting with a meditation for at least, I like sometimes doing like a 40 day journey 
or even a month, right? Like picking like one meditation that I'm really like going to dive deep into that whole mm-hmm. month. Um, because I don't know, for me, it's just kind of fun to see as it like kind of evolves and grows and shifts, like stepping in for the same one for a full month. And then, you know, at that point, I can decide if I want to like stay with it, or if I feel like complete with that, and I want to try another one, how I how I did it in the book is so there the four step meditation process of remembering who you are, which is, you know, connecting to your infinite self and source in the universe, and then getting clear on your soul's desires, and then clearing all the fears and the wounds, which we just talked about, and then the quantum embodiment becoming that next level you, those those four major steps of manifestation. I did 10 meditations of each of those. So you could, you know, my, my vision and my hope is that someone will be like, great, here's 40 days worth of meditation that will literally transform my life. Let me show up to either a new meditation, like just go in the order that I put them in in the book for those 40 days, right? Or what you could do is select one meditation from each category, right? And do that for like a week, right? So I'm going to do for a week, I'm just going to do this one meditation I really like about, you know, connecting to the universe. And then the next week, I'm going to do this other meditation for connecting to my heart's desires all week long. And then the next week, I'm going to do this meditation for releasing um, negative beliefs all week long, right? Um, So I think you get to be creative with it. But I do one of my first meditation teachers, Um, I remember she told me, and I pass this on to my students, um, and and it's, I guess, controversial, but I really like it, is we should demand something of our practice, right? And for me, this has been really powerful, right? To be like, really intentional about what am I demanding of my practice? And you could just demand peace. Like, I demand peace this morning, (laughs) right? Of my practice, or I demand, I want to feel like a deep connection, or I want to relieve this anxiety, or, you know, obviously with the book, it's like, I'm ready to create this life, and I'm willing to do the steps for it. Um, So I love when we're intentional about a practice. And if that, that's, I think, a power of if you want to do one meditation, multiple, you're really saying like, this is my intention. Like Mm -hmm. this month, I'm going to, I'm forgiving me and I'm forgiving everyone. So I'm going to do a forgiveness meditation all month long. And this is the month of forgiveness, (laughs) right? I love that. That's wonderful. Really powerful. Really powerful. So what is your favorite kind of meditation? Is it guided? Is it just music? Is it, you know, do you set your intention and dive in? Or just listening to what's going on around you. They call it a listening meditation, which resonates with you. Yeah. Um, I like, I really, I do love music. I do. Lo- I listen to like solfagio frequencies sometimes when I meditate. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love that in the background or sound bowls, but I don't, I don't always have it. It's just, that's kind of like a nice little treat when I do. Um, but I think generally I do, I just, I connect to my, I kind of self guide at this point. Right. Um, so I connect to my heart space and then I call in all of my divine support squad. I call in all of my angels and my guides and my loved ones and everyone of the highest and truest good that's watching over me. And, um, and then I go into what I like to call the infinite abyss, the cosmic ocean. Uh, <laughs> and from <that>. there, <laughs> yeah. And I just hang out there and depending on what I, you know, my intention is for the day will probably depend on what I do in that, that time. Right. So there's a a few different options of that in the book where it's like, you know, connecting to a different frequency that I want to embody or releasing, you know, something that I I want to release from my field. Um, whatever that is during that. That's my like (laughs) go-to. I love that. We need to go on a break, but we'll be right back to talk more with Cassandra Bodzek. Stay tuned. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, man. Um, Oh, the meditations sound amazing. Are they pre-recorded too? So I have some pre-recorded ones that I'm doing in the, that I'm giving away for the bonuses. Um, but then I'm deciding if I'm going to record all of them for more. 
yeah for something else but i wrote them like that was one of my biggest things when i was writing this i was like i really want them to be meditations that someone could like read my instructions and then like go on their own journey you know so they they only have like they all have like kind of like it's almost like five or six like steps steps to hit this you know which i'm hoping to will like empower more people to know that they can self-guide as well. Right. Well, it's like anything okay. else. It's like mm -hmm. you, you, you sit there and you, you give them the basic instructions from your perspective, but yet everybody comes at things from a different way. Right. So it's like, make this your own, put your own fingerprint on this. That's what people do to these, this information. Right. Exactly. You, know, you learn from teacher after teacher after teacher and people course, of, let's do the course of miracles. You know, Marianne Williamson you know, wrote it. She taught it in one specific way. Yeah. Now somebody else might read it and put their spin on it because they process it in a different way. And I think Absolutely. it's the same thing with the meditations. Yeah, yeah. And that's I, that's what I hope. And that's why I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, because, yeah, I feel like so many people can get intimidated with meditation or just self-guiding meditation, especially. And my hope is that it empowers them to be like, oh, actually, this is not as hard, right? It's like there's, you know, every meditation kind of has like a, in my opinion, has like a couple of components, right? Right. We're always like going to breathe. We're always going to, you know, relax. Like you can drop into your heart or drop into your essence or drop into whatever chakra you want to drop into, right? There's like different things you can do there. But then, you know, my hope is the more meditations they do, they kind of start seeing like, oh, I could like mix this and match this and, you know, go on my own, choose your own adventure too. <laughs> I, see, I think that's great. It's like you're giving them the, the, the springboard that they can jump on and go whatever direction they want to when they yeah. want to. Uh, yeah. Mother, we are coming back. Perfect. Thanks, Matt. You are listening to Guided Spirit Conversations. To reach Marla Goldberg or her guest today, you're invited to call into the program at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is guidedspiritconversations at gmail.com. Now, back to this week's program. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Thank you for sticking around. If you've just tuned in, I'm with Cassandra Bodzak. We have been talking about her course, Divinely Designing Your Life, which you can find at CassandraBodzak.com. And that's C-A-S-S-A-N-D-R-A-B-O-D-Z-A-K.com. And we're also talking about her book that's coming out next week on the 21st of September, Manifestation meditations and so we we're talking about all the meditations not, not about all of them individually but as a broad stroke and and you know different ways one can get into meditating and so welcome back cassandra but before we get back into conversation it's charity shout out time and cassandra's charity is a simple wish.org let's talk about what a simple wish is oh Interesting. Um, so I actually don't know about a simple wish because I think maybe my assistant picked that and didn't tell me that oh, one simple wish. I'm sorry. One simple wish. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I was going to pick a different one. Well, uh, let's talk about the one you wanted to pick. So which <laughs> so, did you want so to talk sorry about? about that? That was a miscommunication. Now we talked about two. So it's okay. Now we're talking More about exposure. Two. <laughs> so one simple wish, check it out. I'm, my assistant Bridget is wonderful and she probably loves it. But forgot you, her name me. is Bridget also. <laughs> yeah. So is mine. <laughs> <laughs> the Bridgets. <laughs> um. So a charity that I really love is Global Connections for Women. I've worked with them for years. Um, they help support um, all different kinds of women from different backgrounds that have, you know, different economic or socioeconomic situations going on, empower them, um, provide them with tools so that they can get back into the workforce so that they can become entrepreneurs if that's their path. Um, and so they provide them with all this education to really empower them to be able to, you know, 
regardless of the misfortune or the struggles that they've been with, uh, really be able to have the tools and the, and the confidence and, you know, have access to resources um, so that they can really be a force in the world and they can um, create an impact. So I really, really, my, um, I, a woman I met many years ago in New York City, um, Lillian is the founder of it. And um, I think it was, you know, it won an award for being, you know, um, uh, one of the UN based um, women's organizations, um, one of the best uh, charities. And I just love everything that they do um, and all of the resources they provide um, for women and have continued to provide as well via Zoom over. Um, you know, the past couple years with everything. So gc4w um, dot four, like the number dot org, if um, you want to check them out, or if you have a friend that could benefit from their support. That's wonderful that I, you know, both organizations, I think anybody who's trying to do something to help better the world, you know, is, is a worthy cause. Absolutely. And I think it's so important to, you know, investigate ones that really like tug on your heartstrings and, and, yeah. you know, focus and get involved in them. Absolutely. The, the resonation, it's got to resonate. Yeah. You know, if you do something that isn't resonating, you're not going to be joyful and do in helping. And being yeah. of service is a beautiful thing. You, you really feel good by knowing that you've contributed to somebody else's, you know, betterment. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think all of us are called in different areas for different reasons, right? We all have ones that are like, you know, and so I think it's so important to just like go where you're called. There are so many beautiful options out there, right? So many. And speaking of go where you're called, I want to move into what would you say to somebody who is on the precipice of, of just stepping into their journey or have actually started stepping in the journey, but are a little apprehensive about moving forward because there's a lot of, there's a lot of misnomers out there about what spirituality is and, and what the spiritual path itself could be. So how mm. would you talk to somebody just starting on theirs? Hmm. I would say just start where you are, you know, start where you are. And, and this path is something that's just going to open up a whole new way of being in the world and a whole new way to interact with life. Um, that is incredible, but also just start with what's in front of, in front of you, what's on your plate right now. So I would say, you know, what, what's like going on with you right now? Is it like, is it that you're struggling with anxiety around stuff going on in the world? Okay, then that's like, let's, let's enter our spiritual journey there. And let's say, okay, maybe the, the, my first intention of this journey is to find more peace in my day to day life, right? And so maybe that's where we begin our journey from. And we meditate with that intention is to find more peace in the day to day. And, you know, whatever higher power you believe in, um, by whatever name you feel comfortable calling it. I think the first thing you can also do is just opening up that relationship, right? So whether it Absolutely. is just a simple prayer, um, or speaking out loud while you're doing the dishes and being like, Hey God, Hey Jesus, Hey Buddha, Hey Gaia, love, whomever, <laughs> Gaia, mother, you know, whoever mother, you father, want to talk God. to. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, exactly. Whoever you want to talk to, just start talking to them. Just like start opening that communication line and involving them in your life and letting them know what's on your heart. And I think that's like a really easy place to start. And then same thing. It's like if you're whatever is like yearning, like if you're yearning, let's say for your like a romantic relationship right now, or you're yearning for, you know, a career advancement, or you're learning to like not feel so anxious about money or whatever it is. I often say it's like the thing that's tender, like the wound or the thing that we want to kind of like scratch the thing that naturally is like coming up for us. That's just the, that's the place to start. Right. That's so the place true. to start. And so this journey can be a catalyst 
you know, to helping you move through whatever that is for you Mm -hmm. right now and heal that and shift that in your life. And so bring the whatever meditation you do, whatever spiritual, you know, if you're listening to, you know, spiritual talk shows or podcasts, you know, go into it with the the intention of, you know, let me hear something that's going to create a shift in me around this topic, right? That's going to give me a tool. And then again, like, again, opening that co- communication. And I would say, don't overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate it. Let it be that simple at first. And it will just take you and you will be guided and you will be led and, you know. And you will, things will pop up that'll get you to, you know, like a class or a way of thinking or a YouTube video, whatever it might be, or a new book, like yep. Manifestation <laughs> meditations but the, to show you the way to guide you the way so yeah. yeah I think it's so true so we only have a couple minutes left is there anything that I didn't ask you that you'd like to talk about you know yeah okay so one thing I would say is one of the the biggest questions I often get is what like what if I'm trying to manifest why is it not working And that was a big reason why I wrote manifesting through meditation. Um, And one of my biggest, one of the big, you know, when step one is because you have to remember who you are. Right. And so I think one of the biggest reasons why people feel like their manifestations might not be working right on that process is because so often we forget that like, that's like step one, right. We have to, that kindling that connection to remembering that we're infinite to remembering that we are you know divine co-creators to remembering that we are you know our essence of itself is infinite abundance is infinite possibilities right and the more that's like the biggest hack (laughs) i can give anyone to changing your life if you just make that your intention that more times during the day I would like to remember that. I would like to have little moments of connecting with that, right? You're, you know, we're, none of us are ascended masters. And we might not feel it all day, every day, right? But just right. having more moments of that really will shift the way you approach everything in your life. That's so perfect. Thank you. That's such brilliant guidance. I love it. Thank you so much, Cassandra, for being a part of the show. I have so enjoyed our conversation today. and. We'll have you on with your next book because I know another one's coming out after this one. I know something's percolating in there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on and sharing me with your people. Oh, my absolute pleasure. I'm so grateful. And, you know, stay tuned to Cassandra's um, website at Cassandra Bodzak, B O D Z A K dot com, because at some point I have been recorded on her podcast. That's right. And in so the next it few will. Weeks. And it will be coming out so you can receive this in reverse. Um, but check, <laughs> check out her website anyway, because it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful, beautiful website. And it has beautiful content. So you won't be disappointed. I want to thank everyone at Voice America for taking the time to be a part of the show, to help me get the show up and running and all you do with the marketing and everything else. Your God sounds so grateful for you. Bridget, my assistant. Right hand, left hand, so grateful for everything you do for me. So, so very, very grateful. And I want to thank you, the listening audience, to take time out of your day, out of your life, to participate in the show. I do the show. I've designed it with you in mind. And and my heart is really wanting to give you information, new, wonderful people that you may not have heard of, new in ways to, to manifest what you want to manifest. And you can do it through meditations, through Cassandra's book, by the way. Um, and then, um, but, but really, you can't get this time big. So I try to make it as valuable as possible for you. And I'm so grateful that you are participating. Uh, check out my website at Marla Goldberg with two rs.com to see how I work with my clients, my podcasts that I've been featured on, interviews, et cetera, uh, my blogs. Also, um, stay tuned. If you're on Voice America, the next show coming up is Rebecca Hall Greider, and it's Empowering Women, Transforming Lives. So it's a brilliant show. Stick around for that. 
And as I leave you, as always, I send you love. I send you blessings and I send you gratitude. Know how grateful I am that you're in my life in whatever capacity you're in it. And if you haven't heard these words today, I'm going to say them to you again. I love you. You are loved. You are cared for. You're not alone in this world. And until next week, stay well, stay joyful, and be grateful. Take care.